We're still unpacking the results from last week's midterms. Some of those races not called yet, but we're seeing that for Latino voters, there is no one pattern or party. In Florida, Latinos voted strongly in favor of Republicans, swinging critical Miami-Dade County to the right. In New Mexico, Latino voters acted very differently in traditionally blue strongholds. And then along the Texas Rio Grande Valley, it was a mixed bag as Latinos flipped one key house race to Republicans, but otherwise maintained strong Democratic support. Maria Hinojosa is the anchor and executive producer of NPR's Latino USA. Maria, let's talk about this. It's so good to have you here because what, what you've been analyzing is the fact that neither party has really figured out how to reach out to the voters, but the Republicans are doing a better job in recent cycles yes. than the Democrats. Well, yes, except that these midterms really put a little bit more clarity, right? So the big, what my mantra, Andrea, and it's great to be here with you, an icon. Um, my mantra is Latinos and Latinas are the second largest voting cohort in the United States, right. not a block. And both the country needs to kind of wake up and see this again, and the parties do. Yes, the Republicans have been doing a better job at the outreach, but even with doing a better job at the outreach, Joe Biden just delivered the best midterms than any president over the last two decades and not necessarily going hard for Latinos and Latinas. So that's where, to me, the, 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 the fight for the Latino vote is on. And I want to see what's going to happen now. Now, they, they won in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, in Nevada, and of course, not so much in Florida, which is more complicated because of the large Cuban-American cohort, which has been traditionally Republican on foreign policy as well as, as cultural issues. So interestingly, the opposite of Florida is Florida, Florida, John Fetterman in Pennsylvania, a progressive candidate with a formerly undocumented immigrant wife going hard on immigrant issues. He delivers 68% of the Latino vote. Let me make sure I got that right. I want to, because that's a big, huge number. 68% of really, the Latino vote. That's so interesting. Progressive. Now, now, Giselle, his wife, was such a major factor. I mean, she really carried the campaign when he was, you know, first suffering from that very dangerous stroke. Correct. And, and voters connected with that because she's telling this true story. Now, the interesting thing about DeSantis is that, yes, he does well in Florida, but if you Take a look at the Latino vote writ large, writ large. Will someone like DeSantis actually play with a Latino population across the country? I don't know. I don't know if you're going to have Latino Democratic voters uh, feeling attracted to someone like Ron DeSantis or even Republican voters feeling attracted to him. Why did we find, um, at least those in the, in the field found, that Latino voters in the Rio Grande, many of them were supporting the migration buses that extraordinary, you know, Governors Abbott and DeSantis sending people with no one no knowledge of where they were going and sending them farther away from their hearings? And Look, I think this is such a complicated issue, obviously, right? We have an a party that has basically run on one position, build a wall, and that's it, and the inhumanity of immigrants. It is distressing to see people on the border, which I have crossed for the entirety of my life, and you know what's out of control on the border, Andrea? It's not actually human beings trying to find their way. What's out of control is the militarization of the border, the, the violence at the border, the violence that the Border Patrol actually perpetrates and creates with their own policies, something that I'm doing deep investigation. But, Maya, Maya Flores did not win. She was the MAGA Latina. She did not win. And Beto outperformed uh, Governor Abbott there, even though, you know, uh, Abbott won, but he did not win the Latino vote as much as he wanted to. So it, it remains a vote that needs to be sought after. And I think that's the big message, right? If we are the second largest voting cohort, make sure that you are actually taking us seriously because the votes are there. Well, it's such an important message. Love talking to you. Thanks. Please come back soon. I will be back as soon as I'm back in D.C. That's terrific. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Hinojosa. And that does it for this edition of Andrea Mitchell Reports. Stay tuned for Kornacki with all the updates on MSNBC.